Hi traders and welcome to the Technical Analysis Market Watch on Friday the 16th of June. So I've seen some really big breakouts, especially in the last 24 hours on a lot of the indices and the currencies that we check out each week. So we'll jump straight into the charts and see if we can identify any trades for today or early into next week. So we'll start out here with the Aussie USD and we can see a really big 24 hour candle that's actually hit the, the new resistance zone straight at this level, which was the bottom of this head and shoulders that we isolated a little while ago. This is a very, very important zone for it. We can see the uh, multiple touches here right through uh, this year. We can see big support at this level here. We know we had resistance right through there and support, of course, heading uh, underneath the head and shoulders pattern there. We've hit it now with a very, very big sustained move. You can see that we bounced off a very strong level, which was actually, the, ironically, the inverse head and shoulders. So we've basically gone from inverse head and shoulders neckline to normal head and shoulders neckline in basically one move without a pullback which is very very significant very very strong move and you can see we've got a 20 and 50 moving average about to cross or pretty much crossed actually that they'll be confirmed as soon as the candle closes so there's no coming back from that in terms of the cross but look it's at a very very strong level of resistance now so yeah we've obviously seen some very very big market moves and yeah, that has influenced the aussie usd but if it's going to pull up and find problems, this is the area it's going to. This is a very, very strong zone for it. And if you were looking at taking a profit, this was the level that I would have been taking profit at the very, very least, locking in a break even uh, or taking some profit off the table because that has been an extraordinarily strong support uh, long move. I, I wouldn't normally wait that long uh, before taking profit, especially if you're picking it up down here, which is where we were really. I mean, this is the area that you wanted to go long because of all of the support that was there. So... Uh, conversely on the other side look you can make a case there's another head and shoulders over here where the neckline was like this is it's the aussie has been very very technical there's no question about that i could highlight 15 patterns in only in this screen that have played out absolutely perfectly at the right level so it's no real surprise that it's actually hit this level but we do have to respect it because it has got two head and shoulders resting on it as you can see so what we uh, do in this situation is certainly not take the break up if you're still keen on the on the aussie going longer you wait for it to break through and then come back and retest it from the top uh, and if it doesn't happen it doesn't happen but that's the safer trade that's the more conservative entry uh, you don't want to be the first one in on a break of this level but if it does start to roll over and starts to show a series of lower highs and lower lows on a smaller time frame like say a one hour um, then this level here is the level you want to be aiming for which is around that sort of 70 8, 80, 67, 80 area, sorry. Um, that's the level that you want to be sort of aiming for, about 100 pips down from where it is now. But it's a good level to bounce off because it's a very strong level as well. So I would expect that it would probably find support there because it was previous resistance uh, and that will make a difference for it. So if you're going to scalp it short, look for a reversal at this level. And then only, like I said, there's a lot of momentum on the way up. So I wouldn't be trying to short it too much. But if you want to do that, um, yeah, around this level would be your target. But failing that, if you get a break above the 69 level and it comes back and retests it from uh, above to below, then we look for a move up to the 70 cent mark. But again, I wouldn't be taking the first break. I'd be waiting for the conservative entry, which makes more sense. All right, we'll move over to the US dollar CAD. And we've seen a significant break here as well in the last 24 hours. Again, a daily chart. And you can see that we've broken down through a very important channel. This has been very, very solid for yeah a long, long time now, as you can see, all of this year, really. And now we've seen a break of two levels, really. We've seen the break of the 33.20, which was a very strong support zone. And then the secondary support, which is also as important, is that 32.50 area, which has now been taken out. So that, assuming this daily candle closes here, which I'm sure it will, uh, you, you would be looking at a significant break of that channel. Again, I wouldn't be jumping in on the short saying, well, this is doomed because uh, the ideal trade would be a pullback up to this level. I think setting uh, an alert back at the level that it broke, which is around that 132.60 to 50 area, that would be the ideal scenario. Now, when I say alert, I don't mean just an, an ordinary short trade. I'm talking about setting an alert to have a look and monitor what's happening at that zone because what we, we what we can do there is wait for a reversal, a small change of trend on a smaller time frame that is going to indicate that we are going shorter again, Okay. Really, really important that you just don't jump in on a short because this could be a massive rebound. And if it does mass uh, rebound really, really quickly, you might find yourself up in the 33s before you know it and taking out stop losses. So if it gets back up to this level here and it looks like it's going to um, 
uh, basically roll over, which is on a you know one hour chart, we see a series of lower highs and lower lows. Then we can look at taking short opportunities back down to this level here, which is the next real level uh, that I would be paying attention to, uh, because that's where the next uh, resistance is, or that was resistance, which should now be support. Uh, it does look like a, it's a long way away, and that's why you can be patient and wait for a pullback, because if you don't get it, it's probably not a quality entry anyway, and then we'd be looking at smaller time frame pullbacks to a 20 moving average, uh, along the way if it continues to sell off so yes yeah, certainly good trading uh if you were taking the short but again it is at a zone now where you probably should have taken profit well i would have and yeah just be mindful of that, that mini reversal that probably will pull back because it's been a very long sustained sell-off as well over to the us dollar yen and look this one's an interesting one because uh, it's stronger than the other us dollar based pairs but it has also sold off. So yeah, we, we can see here that we failed to make uh, a new high and that we were talking about that last week and it came back down to the 20 moving average uh, and attempted, it's attempted to go high again and it's going to fail quite miserably, obviously. You can see we've got a big shooting star candle there, um, yeah, which tells us obviously that the sellers have completely obliterated the, block, the buyers in that trading period um, and it's failed to close above that high. So that is a weakening sign for it. There's no, um, no worries about that around that 140, 50 area. Um, yeah, look, it got as high as 140, 150, you know, and, and that's, so that's really significant in the sense that, you know, this is how much it's sold off in a day. And obviously the last 24 hours have been very important for these markets, but it, it's important to pay heed of what has actually happened price action wise. Uh, in my mind hasn't changed in this one that while the 20 moving average is holding it up, I'm not interested in taking the short, but if we get a daily close below the 20 moving average, yeah, so below that 138.80 area, you can start looking at the next support zone, which is around that 138.20. I'd be looking at scalping opportunities on the yen on the way down. And of course, if we see some sort of um, a reversal that starts to push it up higher, it needs to actually break this 141.88 before I get interested in any long action on this one because it's failed too many times now uh, for me to take it seriously until it actually proves itself. So it needs to prove itself above this level and then we'll be off uh, and ready to go. But a trade uh, or close below the 138.80 on the trending moving average and then I'd be starting to target mini shorts down to the next serious support zone, which is a very serious support zone here. Uh, you can see right through the history here how important it has been okay over to the dollar index uh yeah obviously a sell-off no no real surprises there um it's broken down through all the key moving averages I, I did say last week that it's a do or die level uh if it doesn't hold here it's in trouble uh and in trouble it certainly is uh you can see that it's uh, sold off obviously very heavily over the last few days but you know support is not very far away in terms of points it's only about 60 points away from uh, a pretty reasonable level of support but of course the euro is the one we want to be trading here so we'll jump straight into the euro um, and you can see we've had a big big uh, move up obviously uh, found that bottom very very appealing 200 moving average very strong roll reversal zone none of these are surprises you know this we talk about it every week um, and it's really good to see them all play out so hopefully you can see how technicals really play into each other uh, close above the 20 and the 50 moving average and it was off once once this candle here closed above the 20 moving average uh, which was a couple of days ago uh, yeah this was looking very very strong we had the lightning bolt at that point because that's what you've got you got the um the low the high the lower high the higher low sorry and then the new higher high which is this candle here above the 20 moving average that's your signal to go um, and if you were there at the time and you were able to spot that this trade um, should already be just about over. We're, we're heading to an, an area now where the support is not very, well, the resistance will be um, very close now. The 110 level obviously is a very important target for it. Uh, you can see here that this was previous resistance uh, and a lot of it. So really the one, I'll, I'll pop a line there. 110 would be the area that I'd be aiming for. Probably 110.50 because that's where the real support is. But as an intermediate uh, entry, I'd go to the 110. Okay, uh, and then as a secondary, we would be going to the 11050. But it's well on its way now. You can see it's obviously a big, strong move. Uh, I wouldn't be looking at shorting anything that's got this much momentum unless it actually hits that level and rolls over underneath that that resistance if it doesn't do that yeah not interested in taking any shorts on that one just look for small pullbacks to, on the smaller t time time frames to the 20 moving average if you want to get involved little pullbacks to the 20 moving average in the direction of this momentum and um yeah with a target of around that 110 uh, it should be pretty good on the euro and the s p 500 of course no real surprise here you can see that we've had a big big move up we've broken through that level uh yeah it was respecting the trending moving average then once it got going it just completely cranked up never came back and retested the level that i would have bought it at uh but that, that doesn't concern me because at the end of the day it can still come back and if it does we'd be looking at it a lot more seriously at the trending moving average um, and a little mini roll reversal zone 
you know, target of 45 uh, 50 really uh, is still the goal for this one, uh, but I would like to see a pullback before we start going long for that because you know it's it's really not that sustainable that it can continue going up. It's not healthy. It's not it's not that it's not sustainable. It could certainly do it, but it's not a healthy way to trade. We really want to see pullbacks that are, are meaningful. That gives us the entry points that we want to get into to join the actual trend. But there's no question it's obviously very strong and very long. But uh, we want to enter at quality entries too. We don't want to be jumping on a moving bus, of course. If it does start to roll over at this level and we see a series of lower highs and lower lows on a one hour, I could look at potentially shorting it back down to the 4,300, but that would be a target. I wouldn't be looking any lower than that at this stage because it's got too much momentum on the way up. And of course, uh, in a few days, the 20 moving average is going to be right on that level as well. So that could be a really good trampoline point for it if it does come back and test that level. And if it doesn't, we just let it go and wait for it to get up this level and look at another opportunity. Again, we don't want to be moving um, or jumping on a moving bus. So I hope you had a great week's trading. We've seen a lot of big moves this week, uh, especially in the last 24 hours. Big, big breakouts. And uh, it's going to be very, very interesting to see how we go early next week. Because if these breakouts continue, um, yeah, we could potentially have a very strong trending week next week into the direction of the bigger uh, take profits that we've been looking at. So have a great weekend, everybody. I look forward to seeing you all next week.